or thinking about inequalities. So we're going to start. I'm going to write a couple on the board. So our first one, I want you to give me four solutions. What? I think she comes in the afternoon. Okay, so four possible solutions to x is less than five. So you need to list five solutions for, or sorry, four solutions for x is less than five. Okay, for number two, four possible solutions for x is greater than or equal to ten. Number three, write the inequality. Yeah, what numbers could you solve, put in for x that would make this true? Yeah, four solutions. So write the inequality for um, you must be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just what it said. I don't know. I think it might be Miss Ellis. Yeah. The one next door? Mm-hmm. Who's that? You literally just asked. No. Tatum? Oh, this class was by next door. No, the person on Tatum's football picture thing. Who's that? Okay, write the inequality for that one. Okay, so Come on, man, away from school. All right, next round, go number three. How many numbers do you have? Right, the inequality. You need to write an inequality that looks like these. Oh. X is greater than, less than, or equal to something. Oh, Number four, write the inequality. Oh, I'm not getting the hang of it at all. I got, I got used to it. For me, I'll get used to it for a while, and then I'll forget what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so number one, you are giving me four possible solutions. So what can X be to make that inequality true? Same with number two, four possible solutions that make this true. Number three, write the inequality. So you're writing something that looks like x is less than, greater than, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, whatever this situation is. So you must be at least 35 years old to run for president. Write that inequality, please. Number four, again, you're writing an inequality. You must be 12 or younger to order from the kids menu. So I'm going to give you guys about three minutes on these ones, and then we're going to do a couple more practices. Hey, I'm 12 or 15 to order from the kids menu. Yeah. Okay, so work on those ones, please. And like the kids and like better than the kids. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah.
Hey, about one more minute and we're going to review these ones. What if someone was making a video? Huh? Like, like, they weren't, like, well, they weren't naked or free, but they were coming Oh, I'm so cute. And they went naked. back seven, three years to the seven years. Dell and I honestly thought you said. Hey, Yoshi. We are recording a lesson. Okay. Recording. So it's not. Alright, let's go ahead and review these. So our first one, we need four possible solutions. What numbers can we put in for X to make this true? Any numbers that are less than five. What did you guys get? 4.9. What else? Negative 333 and 110. Alright. What else? What else is less than five? Three. Three. Two and one. Two, one. Can I put the number five? No. No, because no, it's not equal to, so you cannot use five. It has to be anything less than five. Okay? Number two, four possible solutions for x is greater than or equal to ten. Charlie, what's one? Ten. Ten. Good. You can include the number ten because it's equal to. Twelve. Thirteen. What else? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, but what else can I go bigger? You can do a decimal. 444. 1,000. Anything that's greater than 10 works for that one. Okay? And you can include 10. So don't forget that you can include 10 on those ones. All right, next one. You must be at least 35 years old to run for president. So can I be... Younger than 35. No, no. You can be 35 or older. Good. You can be exactly 35. So your age can be exactly 35, which is that equal to part, or greater than 35. Okay. So you can be exactly 35 to run for president. Or you can be 83. Or 42. 61. Right? Doesn't matter your age as long as you are greater than 35 or equal to exactly 35 years old. And, yeah. We're, we got some old presidents right now, so. Oh, it's true. Biden. Well, right now Trump is in his 70s, <laughs> and then Joe Biden is also. Uh, Joe Biden is in his late 70s, so. Oh, wait. Trump is in his 70s? Trump is like 74, 75. Oh, yeah. Anyway, all right, next one. You must be 12 or younger to order from the kids' menu. So if I'm 13, can I order from the kids' menu? No. No. So it has to be less than. Your age must be less than 12. Can I be exactly 12? Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can be exactly 12 and order from the kids' menu. I still get I exactly 12. I don't know. All right. We're going to do four more problems because these are the solutions. This is how to write them. And now we're going to do some practice with solving them, and then we'll talk about our new stuff today. So a couple more practice things. We are going to be solving all four. Okay. Let me get it pulled up on my computer so I can see what numbers are written down here. All right, so we have 2x is greater than or equal to 8. So, so you can start solving that one. We have x minus 3 is less than 9. Yeah, we're doing four more problems. Then we have 12 is greater than x plus 6. And then finally we have x divided by 2 is less than or equal to Six. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to work on these. Remember, you solve them exactly like you solve an equation. Split it down the middle and solve for the variable. Okay. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to work on these ones. Go ahead. Thank 
Then the sign. Divide by two. If I divide on one side, what do I have to do on the other? Also divide by two. Two divided by two cancels. And you're left with x. What is eight divided by two? Four. Four. Two goes into eight four times. What goes in the middle right here? The sign. The inequality sign. So just drop it straight down. Greater than or equal to four. Not an alligator mouth. So there is your inequality. That's your answer. X is greater than or equal to four. And remember, you can have solutions like four, five, one thousand, eighty-two, anything greater than four. Alright. Let's look at number two. What's my first step to solve for X here? Good. Put your upside down T down your inequality. All right. Step number two. What am I going to do next? Um, 
Good. We need to do the opposite of subtracting three, so we need to add three on both sides. What is the negative three plus three? Zero. Zero. They cancel out. So we have x, and then we have nine plus three, which is twelve. What goes in the middle? X is less than twelve. Guys, Maddie isn't the only person in class. Oh, yeah. I'm just listening. All right, well, where are you guys are just listening? All right, um. What kind of solutions can we have here? 11. What's less than 12? What numbers can go here? Negative 3 plus 7. 9. Good. Anything less than 12? Can I do exactly 12? No. Nope, it's not a solution because it has to be less than 12. Good. Let's look at number three here. 12 is greater than x plus 6. What is step number one? Upside down t. Good. What do you do next, Leon? What? There we go. We need to, this is an adding 6, so we need to subtract 6. Do I just do it to one side? No. Both sides. Good. So what is 6 minus 6? Six? Zero. Zero. Those are going to cancel out. We're left with x on this side. Then we have 12 minus 6. Six. Is 6. What goes in the middle? Good. 6 is greater than x. Now this is backwards. We don't usually see it like this, right? So we need to flip it to where your x goes first. So essentially we write it backwards. We have our x first. Our arrow is pointing towards the x, so we need to make sure it keeps pointing towards the x. So it's going to flip around. And then our 6 comes over here. So that flips to become x is less than 6. What sort of numbers are less than 6? 5.9. What else? 4. Negative 38. One more. What else is less than six? There's an infinite number of possibilities. Anyway, less than six. Hey. Okay. All right, and number four here, our last one. Put it down the middle like normal. This time we have x divided by two. What's the opposite of dividing by two? Multiplying. multiplying by 2, we are going to multiply by 2. Remember, a dot means multiplication. If I multiply on the left, what else do I have to do? Multiply on the right. Multiply on the right. Good. This 2 and 2 will cancel. We're left with x. What is 6 times 2? 12. 12. Good. And then we can drop down our inequality. So what is my thing going to say at the end? X is less than or equal to 12. Good. X is less than or equal to 12. What sort of solutions can I have here? 12. 12. 12, because we have exactly equal to 12. What else? Six. Negative 3. Negative 3. 6. One more. Two. Negative 2. Good. Lots of options, right? So there's our inequalities for that. A little bit of review before we get into what we're going to do now. Um, I'm pretty sure it's been posted by now. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and present my screen. Okay, and then on Google Classroom. Yes, on Google Classroom, under math, you should... Yeah, oh, I have it scheduled for 10.30. Let me go get it posted for you guys. That's okay, you can get them turned in today sometime. All right. No, we've always started math at 10. That's never changed. All right, so now you should have a, a new one on Google Classroom called Graphing Inequalities Notes. I don't know for sure. It's okay. The notes are for you. They're not for me. I don't need to see your notes. Okay. 
So graphing inequalities. So we have learned how to write them, which is what we did first. We've learned how to talk about what solutions we can have with the less than, equal to, all of those things. We've also talked about how to solve them. Now we're going to learn how to graph them on a number line. So let's go ahead and get these opened up. There we go. All right, so can you guys see this? Okay, let's get those Google Slides opened up and learn how to graph inequalities. We're actually going to watch a video instead of me talking too much. So, well, you guys don't need to play the video. I will play it. If all of us play it, it's going to be annoying. So I'll play the video in a minute. I'm going to give you guys a minute to get it kind of pulled up and open. We'll watch the video. It's about nine minutes long. Um, please stay awake during it. It's got really good information because it's how to graph them. And then we're going to do a little bit. Uh, we're going to answer some questions based on the video. We'll do some practice, and that'll be math for the day. There's no assignment today, just some practice on how to do it. Okay? Tomorrow you will have an assignment on this exact thing, though, so make sure you're listening. Yes, yes. yes. Are we learning it? I, I, I'm not even going to answer that because what do I do every day? Teach you things that you no. should be learning. No, like, well, we're going to learn it. Like, it's going to be taught to us, right? First with the video, then we're going to practice it. Yeah, that I, I just said that. I'm so confused. <laughs> okay, we're going to go watch the video now instead of that. So I'm going to get this opened up. It might be a little bit loud if you're online, so maybe turn it down for a second. But it takes a couple of tries to get there. There it goes. Hello, this okay. So we're going to talk about how to graph inequalities on a number line. And behind this dude that's supposedly going to be talking is a number line. It's just like um, what we've been using for, um, we've been using these a while. When we talk about adding and subtracting negative numbers, um, I've shown you the one behind me up on the wall. I mean, I guess a little bit. Yeah. But we're going to um, listen to this video. This guy is going to talk about how to graph inequalities. And, uh, yeah, this is as loud as it goes. So those of you here might have to listen closely. Sorry. I don't know how loud it's going to get. But I'm going to go ahead and play it while you guys listen. And we're going to play it in three, two, one. This is Mr. Buffington. And today we are looking at inequalities on a number line. So we will talk about inequalities on a number line and more inequalities on a number line. Yay. All right. Then we'll be doing some practice, practice, and practice as usual. First off, let's talk about the inequality signs. The signs that we usually use for inequalities are these two signs. The greater than sign opens to the left. The less than sign opens to the right. The open part, or if you were to consider it like a Pac-Man mouth, the open mouth goes to the larger of the two numbers. All right, so that's the basics of inequalities. When we're working with inequalities and variables, they're a little bit more complicated. So that's when we use a number line. Here's an example. I want you to tell me what are the numbers that are greater than 3. So I have the greater than symbol. I'm looking for everything that's greater than 3. So you might say, well, 4 is greater than 3. 5 is greater than 3. Maybe 9 is greater than 3. 11 is greater than 3. All right? But we also have to consider that 3.1 is greater than 3. 3 and a half. 3 and 3 quarters. So basically, every incremental step, everything that's bigger than 3 would be highlighted in this, and it's impossible to list all of them. So the way we show it using a graph, instead of putting these points on here, we would just draw an arrow. So you can see this. We would have the open circle on 3, and then we would have the arrow going to everything that is greater than 3, so everything to the right of 3. That's how this works when we're, when we're using number lines to show inequalities. Let's do an example. If I ask you to show me x is greater than 5, 
That means everything greater than five, all the possible numbers that are greater than five. So I would start by marking the point five, and then I would draw an arrow showing everything greater than five. That's it. That's how we show inequalities on a number line. Let's do another one. Show me x is less than 4. So for this one, I'm going to mark the point 4. And then I'm going to mark everything less than 4. So everything to the left of 4. And that's how I would show x is less than 4. I select the number 4, and then I do everything less than that. So let's do a little bit of practice. Um, you might not have line, um, a number line sitting around, but try and imagine, or you can draw a, a quick number line and show this. X is greater than negative 2. Did you start with the point negative 2 and then select everything greater than negative 2? Is that what that would look like? All right. Let's try another one. Um, in this one, I'm actually giving you the graph and asking you to write an inequality. What would the inequality for this graph look like? How would you write that? Okay, if you pause the recording and came back to this, maybe you said, well, I see that negative 8. So that's going to be a part of it. The arrow goes to the left, so it's everything less than negative 8. So therefore, I would write this. X is less than negative 8. That is the correct graph and inequality. All right, one more. I want you to write the inequality for this graph. Write the inequality for this graph here. Pause the recording, try and figure this one out. All right, hopefully you're back and you wrote x is less than zero. That's what this graph means. It shows selecting zero and then saying everything that is on the left of zero, or in other words, everything that is less than zero is a solution for this inequality. X is less than zero. And if you want to, you can plug in numbers, right? We Just like we did at the beginning, you could plug in negative three. Is negative three less than zero? Yes, then it should be part of the solution. It's something that we highlighted with this graph. Negative one, negative two, negative 10, negative eight and a half, right? All the points that are less than zero are included as a solution for this inequality. Now we're going to change gears a little bit um, and add in a couple more inequality signs. The greater than an or equal to sign and the less than or equal to sign. Number lines are basically going to work the same. There's going to be one change, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to watch this and try and figure out what is the difference in these graphs. Let's take a look. This is a number line. I am going to show you x is greater than or equal to negative 1. To do that, I'm going to start by putting a dot on the point negative 1, and then I'm going to highlight everything that is greater than negative 1. So while you're looking at this, did you notice a difference? Is there something that's different with the greater than or equal to symbol as opposed to the greater than symbol? I'll show you one more with this number line. Show me x is less than or equal to 3. So I'm going to start by selecting the point 3. Then I'm going to select everything less than 3. Have you noticed the difference yet? Pretty subtle, but it's definitely there. When you are graphing a greater than or equal to, you use a filled in circle. Did you notice that with this? Look, the, the point three has a filled in circle, right? Or closed circle. When you're doing the equal to, less, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, they're going to be a filled in circle because it includes that number as well. When we did just the less than, or in this case, the greater than, or the less than, you can see over there we used open circles. All right, And those open circles tell us it's not equal to that place. It was everything bigger than or less than, but not equal to that exact spot. So we use the open circle. Okay, and You can go back and look and see when we were doing less than or greater than, we used open circles. And when we're doing... Um, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, we always use the closed circles or the filled in circles. All right.
So let's go ahead and do a little bit of practice. Um, I want you to go ahead and show me what would this look like. X is greater than or equal to 7. Pause the recording. Try and do that one. If you have a number line, you can do it on the number line. If not, you can imagine what it would look like on the screen. Don't draw it on the screen using a Sharpie, though. You won't be really upset. All right. So you're going to have a closed dot. We have a closed dot because it's greater than or equal to. In other words, the point 7 is part of the solution. And then we're going to highlight everything that's greater than 7. All right, another one. I want you to write the inequality for this one. Look at the graph. Notice whether it is an open circle or a closed circle. And then write the inequality for this graph. Is that what you said? X is less than or equal to. 6. Starts at 6 and highlights everything less than 6, but it's a closed or filled in circle, so therefore it includes 6 as well. X is less than or equal to positive 6. All right, go ahead and write the inequality for this one. What does the inequality look like? Oh, is that what you wrote? X is greater than or equal to negative 4 greater than or equal to. Again, the greater than or equal to is because it's a filled in circle at the point negative four, and we are highlighting everything greater than four with the arrow going to the right. So this is an inequality of x is greater than or equal to negative four. This is a little bit challenging, but it's also very visual, which is kind of nice for math. When you get into higher level math, less and less is visual, more and more is kind of abstract. But the key is to practice, practice, practice until you get this. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day. All right. So we're going to kind of review that a little bit because there was a lot of information at once. Um, but essentially, you're drawing dots on a number line and pointing the arrow that you think is the correct way. That's really it. So if we look at slide number three at our review part, we're going to have to go ahead and type into here. Um, let me zoom in just a little bit. Number one says, use an open circle, so a circle that's not colored in, with which two types of inequalities? Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to? We'll type the actual sign. Good, we're going to do that with greater than, which looks like that, and less than which looks like that so those two symbols if you see those greater than or less than you're using an open circle so you just draw a circle you do not color it in you just use an open circle on the number it tells you to put it on okay All right. And then number two here, when do you use a closed circle? Great. Um, so greater than or equal to. And less than or equal to. I just under use the underline function. So I, yeah, I just use the underline thing and type the uh, the inequality instead of finding the symbol. So a closed circle means that you're literally going to be um oh missed the G coloring in a full circle, right? On whatever number it tells you to um to graph it at and if it's greater than or just less than you're just drawing an open circle do not color it in all right we're going to do a lot of practice with this today and tomorrow and then you guys will have a small like independent work tomorrow on it so once you get the hang of these it's quite easy you just draw the circle point the arrow in the direction you're supposed to point it that's it that's it. Okay, and then how do we know which way to point the arrow? It didn't really talk about it too much. 
So how will we know? Good. If the inequality is less than, you point the arrow left towards the less than way. If the inequality, oops, it, oh my gosh, can't spell, is greater than, you point the arrow right. So, and that goes as well if they're equal to, right? If it's less than or equal to or just less than, you're pointing it to the left because it's all the numbers that are less than that number. If the inequality is greater than or it's greater than or equal to, you'll point it to the right because those numbers are greater than the number that you're given. Huh? Okay. I'll give you about a minute to finish typing this out. If it's greater, the numbers are to the right, right? Anything that's greater is going to go more positive, which means your arrow is going to point to the right. Oh, no. All right, about 30 more seconds, and then we're just going to look at slide number four. Slide number four just gives us some instructions on how to draw a couple of things to draw your arrows online. Slide number five is just a little bit of review on some of the words that you're going to see for different inequalities. And then number six and seven, uh, I think I practice, right? What did they forget? Smaller there. Okay. Okay, let's look at slide number four. Slide number four just kind of gives us um, an idea of how to draw these lines so that we can show which direction our arrow is pointing. Um, you click on the line button in the toolbar. So that is right up here at the top, line. There's different types. You can do arrow, but you either do the line or the arrow. So let's everybody just do that right now. Drop it down and click on the arrow button. When you click arrow, you get this like, Cross, and you can click and you hold and drag for as far as you need to to draw your arrow. Yeah, you can point it any direction you need to, and it draws that arrow for you. Then you might need to restart your computer. Sorry. It's not working? You have to hold, click and hold. So you drop down, select arrow. And then you oh. click, and then you have to hold while you drag the arrow the direction you want it to go. Oh. Is it working now? Okay. So draw a couple of arrows on the screen so you know how to draw those arrows. Uh, if you do the line, that's fine too. The line will be the same. But it's helpful if you do the arrow because the arrow tells me that you're pointing in that direction. If you draw the line, I don't know which direction you're actually pointing your arrow, right? So use the arrows, actually. I lied. Okay, do a couple arrows. Just practice this. Draw them diagonal if you want to. It will only do one at a time, yes. You can make it as long as you want to. I'm making a Okay. How are we doing? Getting some good practice online? Do we get how to draw those arrows? Because we're going to draw a couple on our thing today. Okay. Hopefully that's working for you guys. I got it. All right. Okay. So we will draw those arrows in a minute. And then for each of the problems, they give us either the closed circle, which is the red circle. Or they give us an open circle, which is just 
a circle. Okay. To um to review really quick, if I want to use this red closed circle, which two inequalities am I going to do it for? Okay, the ones that are equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, you're going to use the closed circle, the red closed circle. Yeah. Um, and then if I'm using the open circle that's not colored red, what two inequalities am I using? Greater than or less than. Good. So let's go ahead and look at slide number five where we have a few practice, not practice, Um, what are these called? Vocabulary words. So if we look at greater than, you might see words like more than, larger than, things along those lines. We've talked about this already. If you see words for less than, you might see fewer than, smaller than. You might actually see the words less than. You have to spend less than $80. Less than 80 right? Yeah. I don't know. That's just how it was written. You don't do anything on this one. These are just a couple. Practice drawing some arrows. Um, this is just a list of a few things that you might see. It's not every single phrase that you might see that means these words. Um, it's just a couple that, of examples. So you might see those for greater than or less than. For greater than or equal to, you might see things like at least, the minimum, not less than, or no less than. For less than or equal to, you might see things like no more than, no greater than this, at most is not more than. So there's a couple of examples there for what you might see. Our next one, we're going to look at slide number six here. We're going to write a couple of inequalities just to practice. Um, you can copy and paste these inequalities up here if you'd like to. Copy and paste them so that you have the right ones. Well, let's start with this first one at the top left. It says there are at least eight students who wore a blue shirt today. So you can type where that thing is, click on it, double click to get there. So let's do students. Let's use S for students. So the number of students was at least eight who wore blue. If at least eight wore blue, does that mean that four wore blue? At least eight. Yeah, for students. It's greater than. You need to have more than eight people, but can we have exactly eight people that wore it? Good. It's greater, not greater than or less than. Those are two things. Good. Greater than or equal to eight students wore blue. So the number of students is greater than or equal to eight that wore blue. You can copy and paste these over there if you want to. So instead of typing out, you can copy and paste the ones from the top. Copy and paste it if you want to. I did not. I just underlined the greater than symbol to make it greater than or equal to. Um, as you're typing, you can highlight the greater than symbol and hit the underline button. Or you can do control U that underlines things. So go ahead and write that. And then there's actually five more here for you guys to do. I want to give, ooh, we were running out of time. That's all right. I'm going to give you three minutes. Finish these up, please. Finish up these five really quick. Take a couple minutes to finish those. Wait, which 
All right, let's go ahead and go over these. Let's go down. It says classes should have no more than 35 students. If we have no more, can I have more than 35 students? No. Can I have less than 35 students? So our class size should be less than, oops, less than 35. But is it less than or equal to or just less than? Can I have exactly 35? You can have exactly 35. But you can't have more than that. Bless you. So it just needs to be anything less than 35 students. Our next one, you need a oops, sorry. You need a minimum of five players on a basketball team. Can I have exactly five players? Yep, so players can be exactly five. Can I have less than that? Nope, we need greater than or equal to five players. All right, if we go over to the top one over there. Storm Lake Middle School is fewer than five miles from Walmart. Is it? So let's do middle school. M for middle school. What inequality will I use here? Uh, yeah, this is less than five miles from Walmart. Am I exactly five miles from Walmart? Nope. Nope. We're just less than five miles. Good. We are close to Walmart, yeah. The next one. You should have an amount no less than $100 in your account. Can I have less than $100? Yeah. Oh, no less than $100. Okay, we need, a, we need greater than that much money. So money needs to be greater than, but can I have exactly $100? Yeah. Uh-huh. So we need to have greater than or equal to $100. You can't have less than that. You can have exactly $100, but you should probably have more than $100 in your account. That's good. That's fine. A for account works too. All right. And then our final one here. The amount of money that I have is not greater than $1 million. Most people can say that. Yeah, most people have less than a $1 million. So do they have more than a $1 million? No, it's less than. Can they have exactly a million dollars? Yeah. So our money is going to be less than or equal to 
one million dollars because you can have exactly a million dollars most people do not most people are going to have the less than a million dollars but with this inequality you can have equal to it as well don't we all wish we had equal to a million dollars it would be nice a quarter of a million dollars is less than a million it would still be good but i'd rather have the million a quarter of a million is only two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, we're supposed to finish it today, but we might just finish it. Yeah, we only have five minutes. Let's go to lunch. Okay, so um, we spent more time reviewing inequalities earlier today than I expected. So we're gonna finish this tomorrow and talk more about graphing tomorrow. We did a little bit of an introduction today. We will practice it and learn it tomorrow. Um, but do not turn these in yet. We are going to finish um, the notes tomorrow during class. So those of you that are online, you guys are able to head out because we have to go to lunch like almost right now.